Good afternoon and welcome to third grade music week one. Make sure you visit my choice board on my Google Classroom for third grade. There are five, I believe, activities for you to, from which to choose. Please do three activities a week and by the end of the month, please make sure that you have done all of the activities at least once. When you come to my Google Meet or my Zoom classroom, and we'll be using primarily Zoom, make sure you're on time, even a little bit early. Make sure your Chromebook is charged and plugged in. If I'm teaching, please make sure that you are muted. I'm sure you've heard this before, cameras on, microphones off. Because we can have as many as 60 or 70 children on one Zoom lesson for music, we will be using the chat very little. I will use it to ask uh, general questions or if you have something to share. I will not always be able to get to the chat. Make sure at all times that you can see me and hear me. In fact, if you have headphones, I highly recommend you use them. I'll be using musical clips and read alouds and you'll be able to hear them much better if you have your headphones on. Be focused, be active, be kind, and make sure you participate. You always learn more and enjoy the experience more when you are participating. Here are the rules for my digital classroom. Would you like something to eat? No, thank you. I'm doing my schoolwork. Today, we will be beginning to demonstrate appropriate audience skills. What does that mean? No walking, no talking, no texting. We spent a lot of time on that last year when you're watching a video for a Google Classroom or for a concert or a movie theater. You wanna make sure that you are focused on the performance. No walking, no talking, no texting. We're going to be working on our rhythm cards today. We're gonna to review kindergarten and first grade rhythms. We want to get up to third grade rhythms as soon as possible so that when we're back in school, we can play our recorders as quickly as possible. Also, today we have a lesson on dynamics. Dynamics are the ways that musicians are told on music to play loudly or softly. And we're going to begin to really look at the families of instruments, what they're made of and how they're played. Let's begin with our rhythm practice. We're going to review kindergarten and first grade rhythms. Good morning, boys and girls. This is Let me get up to the time slot we need. There we go. Kindergarten rhythms begin right here.
Let's try kindergarten cards all together. Let's do the whole set. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Ta, 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 ta. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. One, two, ready, go. Ti, 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 ta, ta. One, two, ready, go. Ti, 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 ta. One, two, ready, go. Ti, 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 ti. One, two, ready, go. Ti, ti, ta, ta. One, two, ready, go. Ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ti, ti, ta. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ta. One, two, ready, go. Ti, 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 ta. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta. Excellent. That is the end of the kindergarten cards. Now we learn a new symbol in first grade. We take two ta's and we add them together. This line is called a tie and it adds them together. This note is said ta, ah. And when you're playing it on your rhythm sticks, you're going to hit your sticks once and then go straight up and down like this for an ah. Ta, ah. Let's try that together. Let's practice this card. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ah, ta, ah. Nice work. Let's try it again. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ah, ta, ah. Now the hardest card in this set looks like this. It takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of coordination. Let's try it together. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ah, ta. Try that again. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ah, ta. Great, I think we're ready to try first grade cards. Here we go. From the top, one. <laughs> Excuse me, they are out of order. Let me fix that. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ah, ta, ta. Try the next one. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ah, ta, ah. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ah, ta. That's the hard one. Let's try that again. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ah, ta. Let's try this card. One, two, ready, go. Ta, 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 ah. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ah, ti, ti, ta. And I believe this is our last card in first grade rhythms. One, two, ready, go. Ti, 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 ta, ah. Now we're moving to second well done, boys and girls. Now remember, dynamics are how a musician knows whether or not to play loudly, softly, or in between. Enjoy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Music with Meg. I'm Meg, and today we're learning about dynamics. Everybody Dynamics describe how loud or quiet a piece of music is. And musicians use Italian words to describe different levels of noise. The musical word for loud is forte. Forte. This is written as the letter F. So if you see the letter F in a piece of music, then you need to play loudly. And the more F's you see, the louder you need to be. Loud, forte, louder, fortissimo, and louder.
oldest, fortississimo. The opposite of forte is piano, piano, which means quiet or soft. Piano is written as the letter P. And just like with forte, the more P's you see, the quieter you need to be. Quiet, piano, quieter, pianissimo, and quietest, pianissimo. If music is not quite loud enough to be forte, or not quite quiet enough to be piano, you can add mezzo in front. Mezzo means medium. So mezzo forte, MF, means medium loud. And mezzo piano, NP, means medium quiet. Now here we have our dynamic scale. And here we have all of our letters. So let's place our letters on the dynamic scale. FF, fortissimo, where would that go? All the way up at the top. Now how about PP, pianissimo, where does that go? Well that goes right here at the bottom. Now how about forte, F, where will we put forte? Forte would go right underneath, fortissimo. And how about piano? Where does piano go? Piano goes just above, pianissimo. And finally, we have MF and MP. Mezzo forte goes underneath forte. And mezzo piano goes just above piano. So there we have our dynamic now sometimes music can start at one volume, for example, pianissimo, and get louder and louder. And we call this a crescendo. Crescendo can be written as a word or as a symbol. Now let's practice some crescendos. We're going to sing happy birthday and we're going to start pianissimo and get louder and louder. Are you ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Now the opposite of a crescendo is called a diminuendo. This is when music starts loud and gets quieter bit by bit. Diminuendos are written as a word or as a symbol. Now let's sing happy birthday again, but this time let's start loud and do a diminuendo. Are you ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Well done, everyone. Now we learnt a lot today, so let's have a quick recap. We learnt the Italian musical terms for loud, forte, and quiet, piano. And we learnt how to write them in music. We learnt the words and letters for dynamics that go louder than forte and quieter than piano. We learnt that a crescendo is when music goes from quiet to loud and a diminuendo is when music goes from loud to quiet. Great job today everybody! Now remember, I want to hear from you. What would you like to see in next week's video? Ask a grown-up to let me know on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you know when my video comes next week. But for now, have a lovely week and I'll see you next time. Bye! All right, boys and girls, dynamics in music and our last 
activity for today is a read aloud called Meet the Orchestra. Remember, we're looking at the four families of instruments. They're gonna be strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. Enjoy, practice good audience skills. No walking, no talking, no texting. This book is Meet the Orchestra. The orchestra plays tonight. The audience has arrived. The musicians are coming on stage with their instruments. What a lot of different kinds they play. Strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. Violin. Players with like instruments sit together in families. The violin belongs to the string family, along with the viola, the cello, and the big string bass. You play all of these with a bow or pluck them with your fingers. The violin is the smallest of the string instruments. Its song can be as bright as laughter, light as air, soft as a whisper, or sad as a tear. Viola. As instruments get bigger, their voices get lower. The viola looks and sounds like a big brother to the violin. It has a deeper tone, reminding you of evening shadows, cloudy skies, and the color blue. Cello. You can't tuck a cello under your chin the way you do a violin or viola. It is so big you must rest it on the floor. The cello's rich, mellow voice speaks of deep feelings like joy and sadness. It can remind you of the calm beauty of a drifting swan and of the color purple. String bass. The string bass is the grandpapa of the string family. It is so tall that you must stand up or sit on a big stool to play it. When bowed, its low notes moan and groan. When plucked, its booming sound helps other musicians to keep the beat. Flute. The flute belongs to the woodwind family, along with the piccolo, oboe, bassoon, and clarinet. You blow into all these instruments to play them. At one time, all of them were made of wood. Today, the flute is often made of silver or even of a gold. To play the flute, you hold it sideways, tighten your lips, and blow across the air hole. With practice, you can trill like a bird or play slow, quivering notes as cool as a mountain stream. Piccolo. The piccolo, little sister to the flute, loves attention and always gets it. This tiny flute is so shrill you can't help hearing it. Its high notes almost pierce your eardrums. Yet everyone loves the piccolo because it has such a great sense of fun. Oboe. The oboe has a mouthpiece made of reed. The reed can be fussy and troublesome, then it honks like a goose with a bad cold. But usually the oboe can be trusted. The oboe plays that single note to which the whole orchestra tunes just before the concert begins. Its voice may remind you of faraway castles at sunset, autumn leaves, and the sadness of saying goodbye to someone you love. <laughs> Bassoon. The bassoon is like a large folded oboe. It also has a reed mouthpiece. Its voice, like its name, has a kind of loneliness. Yet the bassoon can also be playful. It chats and chuckles with the other instruments. You often hear it chugging along like a tough little engine. Can't you almost see puffs of smoke coming out of the top? Uh -huh. 
Clarinet. Here are two different clarinets. The straight one is nimble and quick. It toodles up and down the scale, never tripping over a note. Its cool tones melt in your ears, just like ice cream melts in your mouth. This very long bass clarinet is bent at both ends so that it doesn't touch the floor when played. Its low, slow notes may remind you of clouds drifting across the moon, or a snake swaying to a snake charmer's music. French horn. Make way for the brass family, the powerhouse of the orchestra. Even when they play softly, you can sense a huge cat crouched to spring. The brass do not have reed mouthpieces. Your lips buzzing against the metal mouthpiece produces the sound. The tubes of the horn magnify it as a bullhorn magnifies an announcer's voice. The French horn is like a big, bright bell at the end of a long, thin tube. The tube is coiled so that the horn can be played with one hand on the valves and the other inside the bell. The hand inside softens the sound. Uncoiled, the French horn would reach all the way across a very large room. Someone would surely trip over it. The French horn has many voices. It can calm you with its gentle tones or thrill you with its gallant hunting call. Trumpet. The trumpet's shorter tube makes it look easier to play than some of the fancier brass. But is it? No, say the trumpeters. You must work just as hard to learn it. The trumpet's call is noble and exciting. It can remind you of flags flying, soldiers marching, and royal persons entering a great hall. Tuba. The tuba has a huge bell and a very long tube. Do you remember that the bigger strings have deeper voices? The same is true of the horns. The bigger ones make lower sounds. The tuba, the tuba seldom carries a tune. It is more of a rhythm instrument. Its umpas help the brass to keep the beat, just as the thump of the bass does for the strings. Timpani or kettle drums. The big kettle drums sit in the kitchen or percussion section of the orchestra. Everything that is beaten, banged, dinged, or pinged belongs there. Have you ever heard their orchestra rumble with the sound of distant thunder? Suddenly it explodes with a boom, boom, boom. That is the timpani. They look like big kettles sitting side by side. Each has a slightly different pitch. You beat rapidly from one to the other, making the thunder crash and roll. The cymbals look like a pair of pot lids. When banged together, they crash with the fury of an electric storm. If the kettle drums give you the roll of thunder, the cymbals give you the flash of lightning. Hear them ring out just when the music reaches a peak of excitement. This is a proud moment for the whole orchestra. When you sit down at the piano, the black and white keys make your fingers want to dance. From the center, you can play them all the high ones on your right and the low ones on your left. When you hear a murmur of notes burst into thundering chords, then fade into silence, it is probably the voice of the piano. When it is over, you may want to clap or perhaps even cry. Conductor. Now meet the conductor. He is often called maestro, which means master of the orchestra. That he is, for he leads the musicians at all times. 
He does it mostly by talking with his hands. In his right hand, he holds a small stick, the baton. With it, he beats time. His left hand motions, you play now, be quick, livelier, louder, softer. Ah, that's perfect. A raised eyebrow says, you're playing off key. The musicians have taken their places. The strings, or by far the largest group of players, sit in front, almost filling the stage. The woodwinds sit close together at the center. The brass and percussion are in back. The conductor strides on stage in front of the orchestra and raises his baton. I'm now going to play you an excerpt from a piece called the 1812 Overture, as performed by the Boston Pops. I will also show you photos so you have a chance to see the choir that's singing, the orchestra that's performing, the fireworks that were set off during this performance, and finally, a special instrument that appears in this piece of music, cannons. So enjoy. Let the music start. Boys and girls in the chat, well, let me say it this way. Next year in fourth grade, you'll be given the opportunity to select an instrument to play. The only string instrument we teach in Woodbury right now is the guitar, but we teach members of the brass, the woodwinds, and the percussion. So in the chat, write the instrument that you think you might choose next year. Have a super fantastic day.